Hi, my name is Joanne Trung, and I'm a PhD student at Georgia Tech, and I'll be talking about leveraging simulation for visual navigation in the real world. We have seen many videos of robot successes in recent years, from quadcopters navigating through tight spaces to bipeds doing parkour. However, what these videos don't show is that there's a team of control engineers that make it possible. Designing controllers is often very time consuming and difficult to do. Instead, many have turned to reinforcement learning as a solution. Reinforcement learning allows agents to learn on their own through interactions with their environment and by receiving feedback for their actions. However, deep reinforcement learning is very data hungry and robot data is often difficult and time consuming to collect. As a result, many have turned to simulators as a solution. Highly photorealistic simulators have allowed us to study complex tasks such as point goal navigation, object navigation, and room navigation, among others. Simulators can run orders of magnitude faster than real time and can be highly parallelized and can enable decades of robot experience to be collected in days. With these simulation platforms in place, in 2019, the Habitat team by Facebook AI Research proposed an autonomous navigation challenge that aims to benchmark and accelerate progress on embodied AI. In its first iteration, the Habitat challenge in 2019 is based on the point goal navigation task defined by Anderson et al. In this task, a robot must navigate from a starting location to a goal location without access to a map. The robot has access to an egocentric depth image, an egocentric RGB image, and a GPS and compass sensor that it uses for localization. This top-down map is not visible to the robot and is only used for visualization. And from the challenge, there were over 10 submissions with the winning team reaching an SPL of 0.94, meaning that they are able to navigate nearly perfectly in new environments. And thus the task is essentially solved in simulation. However, does progress in simulation translate to progress on real robots? In my first work, we proposed a new metric called Sim versus Real Correlation Coefficient, or SRCC, to quantify the degree of predictivity between performance in simulation and reality. Here, the x-axis represents the robot's performance in simulation, and the y-axis represents the robot's performance in reality. The points are nine different learning-based navigation methods that we tested. SRCC values close to one indicate a high linear correlation and are highly desirable. A high SRCC suggests that performance in simulation correlates highly with performance in reality. In order to directly compare performance in simulation and the real world, we virtualize a real world environment. We place a Matterport 3D Pro scanner at various locations in our environment to collect 360 scans. These scans are used to reconstruct 3D meshes of the environment and the 3D meshes can be directly imported into the simulator. This streamlined process is easily scalable and enables quick virtualization of physical spaces. This pipeline enabled us to execute identical experiments in simulation and reality. We conducted a total of 810 experiments over three room configurations with varying number of obstacles. The agent navigates sequentially through the waypoints for a total of five navigation episodes per room configuration. And reality experiments took over 40 and a half hours to conduct. Parallel testing in simulation and reality was made trivial by a Habitat Pi robot bridge we call Happy. Happy is a software library we developed that enables identical code to be executed on a simulated, simulated agent and a physical robot. We studied the success SRCC using the naive simulator parameters used in the 2019 AI Habitat Challenge. And we find that there is a low SRCC correlation, which suggests that the results and winners may not be the same if the challenge were run in the real world. We discovered that the key factor leading to this low sim to real predictivity is due to a sliding behavior in the Habitat simulator. When Habitat calculates the final location for forward action, it first computes in the location the agent would end up if the step were collision free. Then it searches for the navigable location closest to the collision free point without a constraint. And finally, the agent is moved to this found location, effectively sliding it around obstacles if necessary. 
Since SPL is calculated using the straight line distance between the two points, this cheating by sliding behavior enables the agent to, re to receive a high SPL value by exploiting the simulator's imperfection. To prevent agents from cheating in simulation, we modify habitat dis to disable sliding on collision. And we perform a grid search over simulation parameters to optimize for SRCC. This optimization leads to an improvement in success SRCC from 0.18 to 0.84. And now we can see a remarkable alignment in the success SRCC plot. From these results, the subsequent challenges proposed in the embodied AI workshops at CVPR 2020 and 2021 have focused on realism and sim to real predictivity by disabling sliding, adding realistic sensor noises, and also by directly evaluating robot policies in the real world. So now that we have learned successful navigation policies for these idealized cylindrical robots of simple dynamics, our next question is, can we do the same for legged robots? Legged robots such as quadrupeds from Unitree, Boston Dynamics, and hexapods from Heavy Robotics have emerged on the market as mature, robust commercial robotic platforms. Legged robots are agile and can easily traverse uneven grounds in homes like carpets and stairs, making them ideal for indoor navigation. In addition, for robots to effectively assist humans in complex real-world environments, it is important to develop a variety of robots with different sizes and functionalities, as different robots might be better suited for different environments. For example, mobile-based robots are useful for navigating across factory floors, quadruped robots are better suited for rough terrain, and hexapods are capable of changing its shape to fit through long and narrow pathways or low and wide clearances. So this raises the question, how can we learn a single navigation policy for multiple complex legged robots, such as A1, Alien Go, and Daisy that may be of different sizes, masses, and number of legs? Additionally, how can we sample efficiently generalize these learned policies to new previously unseen robots, such as Lycago, a large quadruped, or four-legged Daisy? While recent works have investigated teaching robots to navigate using reinforcement learning, many of these works learn to navigate without using any visual input or navigate using expensive LiDAR sensors to map the terrain and use it to select footstep locations. These works do not address the challenges associated with indoor navigation where the robot has to navigate around obstacles, go through narrow hallways, and reach faraway goals using only onboard RGBD cameras and localization sensors without a LIDAR or a map. In our work, we again investigate this for the task of point goal navigation. And to recap, a robot must navigate from a starting location to a goal location. The robot only has access to an egocentric RGB and depth camera that it must use to avoid obstacles on the way. The robot does not have access to a map, but is given the goal coordinates relative to the robot. And this top-down view is used for visualization only and is not available to the robot. Next, I will illustrate the challenges of indoor navigation and lighted robots. So while an idealized spherical agent can successfully navigate to the goal with a point nav policy, the same policy transferred to the daisy robot results in the robot getting stuck around an obstacle due to its larger size and turning radius. The dynamics differences between the robots were not accounted for by the policy, thus leading to a failure. Furthermore, we see that a policy trained directly on DAISY is able to successfully navigate to the goal. But again, the same policy transferred to a new robot, the Alien Go, results in Alien Go drifting, and thus it fails to reach the goal within the ma maximum number of steps allowed. And this example highlights the importance of incorporating robot-specific dynamics when learning navigation policies for legged robots and the challenges of generalizing such learned policies to new robots. Next, we investigate the success rate of reaching new goals when taking a high-level policy trained on one robot and deploying it on the other robots. We see that each robot achieves the highest success rate when using a high-level policy that was trained on itself, and success rate deteriorates when using high-level policies trained on other robots. The largest drop in performance is seen in Alien Go from 0.4 success down to 0.16 success when using its own policy 
versus using a policy trained on the DAISY robot. And this is due to the fact that there are the largest dynamical shifts between these two robots. And these results empirically confirm our hypothesis that each legged robot has different dynamics that need to be accounted for by the high level policy in order to, to achieve good navigation performance. To combat these issues, we present a sample efficient framework for learning hierarchical visual navigation policies. And our approach consists of three components. First, we learn a hierarchical navigation policy. We divide the control of the robot into a high level policy that reasons about the center of mass motion and a low level policy that converts high level linear and angular velocity commands into desired footstep locations using an expert design feedback policy and is followed using inverse kinematics. The footstep planner is shared across all of our robots, including hexapods and quadrupeds. And this enables us to experiment with five different legged robot designs, which is otherwise cumbersome due to the need for robot specific controllers. Second, we learn a universal navigation policy across multiple robots. We use soft actor critic as the off policy algorithm of our choice and the actor and critic are shared across all robots. The policy takes in as input an egocentric camera image the goal coordinates specified in the robot's reference frame, as well as a learned robot-specific embedding denoted as Z, which the policy uses to adapt to different morphologies. First, a learned scalar Zn, which is initialized as a random value sampled from a uniform distribution in zero to one, is passed in as input to an encoder we denote as a Z network. The Z network is a feedforward network that outputs a robot-specific embedding. Both the input Zn and the parameters of the Z network are learned alongside the shared policy. And finally, the output of the policy is a two dimensional vector containing the desired center of mass, linear, and angular velocities for the robot to follow. Another key component of our approach is that we share data across the robots during training to sample efficiently learn a navigation policy. At the start of training, each robot is initialized to a different environment and tasked with navigating to different goal locations. After every step, each robot adds to its individual replay buffer. And the replay buffers are combined and shared across multiple robots. The shared replay buffer is used to jointly update the shared policy between the robots. But the individual robot replay buffers are used for updating each robot specific embedding. And by collecting data across multiple robots and environments for training our policy, our training is more sample efficient than training a single policy per robot, and the resulting universal policy is robust to differences in robot dynamics and environments. At test time, our navigation policies can be adapted to new robots by searching for the optimal robot embedding. The learned embedding captures different dynamical properties for each robot, such as turning radius and walking speed which results in different center of mass trajectories. Our approach also shows promising results on robots that were never seen during training. For an example, here is four-legged daisy, and we can see that it is able to reach the goal in a relatively straight path. We demonstrate that our learned policy is able to navigate on five-legged robots in simulation and one real-world quadruped robot. Specifically, we show results on the three robots it was trained on, evaluated in new environments, as well as two previously unseen robots in simulation and on a real world quadruped. We evaluate generalization on two test robots, like Hago and Daisy 4, and we compare the performance of our approach, Learn Z, against two other baselines, A star and Inform Z. We use success inversely weighted by path length or SPL as our evaluation metric, which measures the efficiency of the path taken. Our first baseline denoted as A star is an Oracle point-based policy, which uses a map of the environment to find a near optimal collision-free path to the goal using A star. We find that when we deploy these A star policies on robots, the performance is poor with the lowest performance seen on four-legged daisy. And this is because the Oracle policy does not take into account the robot dynamics. So the robots often fall, get stuck around obstacles, or they exceed the maximum number of loud steps before reaching the goal. And this emphasizes that knowledge of the low level dynamics of the legged robots is crucial for effective navigation. Next, we compare against Inform Z, which is given the dynamics parameters of the robots during training seen on the right. The dynamics parameters include the mass of the robot, 
the leg length, and the number of legs each robot has. However, we see that this method does not generalize to the test robots as well as our method does. And this illustrates the difficulty in selecting the right set of dynamics parameters across robots of different morphologies. Lastly, we see that our method, LearnZ, is able to outperform the other two baselines when evaluating on the two test robots, like Kago and Daisy 4. And since four-legged Daisy is the most different robots from the train robots, we again observe that our approach best performs at out of distribution generalization. So next we will show video results of our approach. Again, the robots only have access to an egocentric RGB image and egocentric depth. And the image on the right is a top-down image that is only used for visualization and is not available to the robot. Here we can see A1 backing out of a bathroom environment and it's able to wait, make its way to the goal successfully. Next is Alien Go, another robot the policy was trained on, evaluated in a new environment, and we see that it is able to avoid the obstacle in front of it to reach the goal. Here we see Daisy making its way around a couch to reach the goal. In new environments, the robots still collide with obstacles, but are able to recover and successfully navigate to the goal. We show generalization to Lycago, a robot never before seen during training, and we see that it is able to make its way to the new room to reach the goal. Next is Four-Legged Daisy, another robot previously unseen during training, and we see that it is also successfully able to reach the goal. We also show zero shot sim to real generalization on an A1 robot in a new home using a policy learned purely in simulation. We use the robot specific, robot specific embedding found during training without needing to fine tune to the real world environment. The robot uses an RGBD camera to reason about the environment and avoid the obstacles in its path to reach goal positions in the new environment. We show A1 is able to avoid obstacles and navigate through narrow hallways in the real world to reach the user-defined goal positions. In summary, our main contributions are one, we present a sample efficient method to learn visual navigation policies on multiple legged robots. Two, we show that our policies generalize to new legged robots and environments. Three, we show that our policies are robust to dynamic differences between robots. Four, we show zero shot sim to real transfer on hardware. And lastly, we hope that our work opens up future avenues for large scale research on legged platforms and for indoor navigation. With that, I'd like to thank my collaborators and thank you for listening.